This is Omar for Box Nation. I'm joined by George Fox, who told me during the uh, fight week he's never been hit by anyone like Daniel Dubois. And you sparred all the top heavyweights in the scene, George. Uh, but just before we come on to the fight itself, a dramatic, dramatic weekend. Have you been able to just take a breath and calm down? Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. A lot, a lot of emotions. Um, like I said, even though I'm connected to the camp, uh, my dad being the head coach, I'm always objective. I'm always, uh, you know, I try to be as patient in my thinking and my thought process and, and how I analyze fights. And so I, I weighed it up. I saw the chances that Daniel had and the chances that AJ had and seeing all the hard work come to fruition in favor of, of let's say, Daniel and, and our plan and how that was executed by Daniel on the night was, was just beautiful to watch. And it's been a whirlwind of emotion since, not a lot of sleep. Um, yeah, interesting, it's been interesting. For your father, who's been in this game for, what, 20 plus years, um, he's dedicated really a huge chunk of his life to boxing. Mm. And he had a, a fantastic journey with Derek Chisora, but it was always you know, that close, but yeah. just not enough with Derek. And he's waited a long, long time to have a, a heavyweight world champion. Of course, he got one after the Hergovic fight. Um, but that was probably even more special than winning a world title. Uh, with 98,000 people beating a former Brit, you know, one of the biggest stars in world boxing, Anthony mm. Joshua, and the, the fashion that Daniel did it as well. I mean, the game plan, your father said, was seek and destroy, and that's exactly what Daniel did. Mm. No, 100%. I mean, first and foremost, um, I'm very outspoken, very, very outspoken, but almost a contradiction, and, and I suppose it's going to sound quite arrogant, but it's, it's, I suppose it's authentic because I'm not, I don't really appear on socials that much. I don't do loads and loads of interviews. I could easily be waxing lyrical about my dad and stuff. And I've never been that kind of person. I've been sort of in the shadows. Um, uh, it's, yeah, but I'd, I've never felt my dad's got the respect he deserves. And Derek is a, like I said, old, like an older brother to me. I don't, anything I say on here, I say to him and he knows that as well. Um, but I, 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 he, people haven't carried out, you know, his full body of work to the, to the degree, you know, to represent it properly. I've always felt that. And um, fortunately, Daniel uh, has, has been able to take on board, you know, elements of that. But also, you know, huge credit to Daniel. I think it's very important to understand it's the merge, it's the meeting of, of, of the whole camp, the whole team that extends to everyone involved. Um, and it's just, it's worked near seamlessly. And yeah, super proud of my father, super, super proud. And it's nice to see, you know, have a bit more acknowledgement and recognition. And I think, I still don't like, don't think he'll get that. And that's not me having a chip on my shoulder. I'm not an entitled person. You just find that Do you not think? I think he's... No, he, he, he is. He is now, obviously, in a wake of something as massive as, as, as Saturday Night was. Yeah. He will, but I think when you actually look, and I was saying this before, and, 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 and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I've thought about my words. Um, when you look at the run and the Usyk, uh, the Usyk fight, let's look back, and I'm not dwelling on it, but this is just this is objective fact. What happens in life, you get a lot of people, it's just because of tribalism, we've got our favourites, whether it's football, you've got your favourite team, boxers, your favourite boxers. You get fans that tend to mindlessly support their fighters because they like them. When you look at the objective facts, the same shot that Boazzi dropped Willie Hutchinson with the other day was exactly the same shot that Daniel hit Usyk with. So um, when you actually look at the run of Usyk, uh, who is now the undisputed champion, unbeaten fighter, Gerald Miller, unbeaten fighter. Hergovic, unbeaten fighter. And then AJ at Wembley, which is like a known, a known thing, like AJ is a force at Wembley. That run in 13 months, you'll, you'll be pressed, and I'm, saying this, I'm not saying that Daniel's the best heavyweight of all time, I'm just saying you'll be pressed to go through any generation and see a run, a sequence where you fought two unbeaten fighters, an, undis an undisputed champion, and, a, and a, a name like AJ, back to back. It's an incredible run, and for a 20, well, it's just recently turned 27-year-old man, what he, de he deserves massive credit. Him, the team, my dad. Yeah, serious, serious, serious run. Yeah, it was, it's astonishing, actually, his mm -hmm. last 30 months when you break it down like that. Um, from the first bell, first moment, it was clear that Daniel wanted to assert his authority and, and show who was the boss in there, and he did mm -hmm. that. Um, the first 10 shot was from Daniel Dubois. That jab was a real problem sure. for Anthony Joshua. It would have been a problem for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, we actually discussed this jab during the week. Uh, mm -hmm a nuisance of a shot for anyone taking it. Yeah, for sure. Listen, Daniel, Daniel's got all the punches in the book. Um, I think his journey has been as much mental as it is physical. Um, he's got the skills, he's got the amateur pedigree, he's given his life to boxing. And I think the relationship, let's say, with my old man and what Daniel's doing now, also Daniel, his age, look at him, like I said, he just turned 27, so he's maturing into his, a man. He's had his setbacks, and now he's at a place where he feels unbeatable. And 
I knew Daniel could win. Um, naturally, you always have your doubts, you weigh things up, but on the ring, during the ring walk, I knew he was going to win because I saw the confidence in the man. This was a man who was on a mission, who was going to go through a brick wall to win. And yeah, that maturity now that he has psychologically as well as um, you know, physiologically being able to assert his identity and, and use his skills, it, it all came to, to fruition on the night. And yeah, the jab is a, a serious shot, serious, lots of power and very accurate with it, times it well. It doesn't show his jab as well. I think that's key. A lot of people have like little triggers or, or, or a tell to show that they're going to jab. He's got a very, very good stiff ramrod jab. You don't know it's coming. That run that he's been on since he linked up with your father, mm. um, from the Usyk fight to the fight on Saturday with Joshua, we've seen, even in the Usyk fight, a vast improvement in Daniel Dubois. But within the Usyk fight, within the Gerald Miller fight and the Philip Bergovic fight, he mm -hmm. had to go through testing times um, in each fight. And what I think your dad's done with him back to back so quickly in each mm. camp and the improvements he's made in each fight. And then we saw the full package of that actually on Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's been remarkable. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. Like you said, it's been, a, it's been a journey, it's been a ride. And I think people forget the Usyk fight. I think my dad had about six weeks prior with Daniel before that fight. So it was straight in the deep end. There wasn't a lot of time to get to know each other. That's on a spiritual level. Uh, you know, when you first, you're first with a trainer, it takes time to gel, gel to the styles, how they hold the pads, what their demands are what their idea in terms of identity of fighting is and, and, and so forth. So it always takes a little bit, there's that bedding in period, bedding in time, and they weren't afforded that luxury because of the circumstances of how and why it came to my father. So you're now starting to see everything come together based on the hard work that they've put in, consistent hard work. And um, I think, yeah, it's just, it, Saturday night was amazing. And, and for me personally, I've gone on a bit of a tangent here, but for me personally, there was a lot of, um, not bad feeling, because it's interesting. I know it's well documented on previous interviews, a sort of overlap or history of my dad and AJ and other things. And I think what got to me a lot was the fact of the, the feeling in and around the stadiums, when you talk to the fans, when you um, even look at the fact that AJ was coming out second, even though Danny was a champion, there was a massive, and I'm not saying this comes from AJ directly, because I know, knowing AJ personally, he takes his camps very seriously. He takes his opponents very seriously. So I'm sure he showed Daniel the utmost respect in training. I'm sure he did. But the whole feeling in and around fight night, team, way too relaxed, way too confident, way too dismissive of Daniel and what Daniel is. And I think they kind of saw him like a little boy and it's AJ at Wembley. And this is, you know, and I don't really buy into that because I, I, respectfully to AJ, I, I'm going to break this down in a minute. I, I don't believe that he's fought as many like live opponents for a while. I don't think he's fought many live opponents. So, yeah. Who would you say has been live? I mean, Usyk springs to mind, of course. Yeah, so this is, this is a great... Aside from that. Yeah, this, so when you, when you actually break this down, and this is, I want to make this categorically clear, clear because a lot of times people try and take things out of context and this is not rubbish in his achievements. This guy's a two-time uh, heavy, heavyweight champion of the world. He's achieved massive things and what he's done for the sport of, of, of boxing and British boxing from a monetary level and a, you know, exposure level, incredible. So let's park that. But when you actually strip away the facts and look at, look at, the, uh, look at the reality, you know, uh, you're talking about becoming a champion, beating Charles Martin, not of, let's be real, it's not of any particular level. You're talking about a 42-year-old Klitschko who hadn't boxed for two years in your, on your home turf. And it was a hell of a fight. I had to go through hell to win that fight. Again, incredible, but it's a 42-year-old Klitschko. And lost out, to Tyson Fury. Ring, and lost to Tyson Fury several years before. Talking about Povetkin, that was 40 years old, who, although he got the knockout win after that against Dillian White, we saw Dillian Boston for pretty much all of those rounds and then got the knockout revenge. Then you're looking at Park. Andy Ru Parker. 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 Parker's probably the, that's what, Parker's probably the most live opponent on his resume. And then you're looking at Andy Ruiz, lost to him, had a rematch with him, and no disrespect to Andy Ruiz. We, everyone knows in boxing, Andy Ruiz has not trained a day since, since he's spunked his money, done whatever he's done. Then you're looking at Usyk, who lost twice. And then you're looking at Otto Wallin, Takam, like Takam, Again, how old is Takam? I don't know. Uh, I'm not, no, <laughs> I don't know how old Takam is. Chisora beat Takam. Yeah. Pulev. Chisora beat Pulev. So this, this whole dismissive thing really got to me because everyone's going on about AJ, AJ, AJ. Daniel is on a better run than AJ. He, he hasn't fought a live opponent for a long time. Otto Wallen is of no level. This is, this is, this is real. This is no, let's not beat around the bush. He's about 6'1", doesn't really punch. It's not of no level. These are not live opponents. And then Francis Ngannou, um, incredible MMA fighter, but made a name for himself off of, of sloppy nights work from Tyson Fury. He, was off, he took him for granted and it became a difficult night, but he's not an esteemed heavyweight boxer, is he? So I just feel like it was mad dismissive. And if the fans are objective and actually weigh that up, 
Daniel was the man in form. Daniel was a champion. He was made to walk first. He was dismissed the whole week, ridiculed the whole week. But he's the one that deserved the credit. Mm. I hear what you're saying. Uh, on the fight itself, did you actually expect it to be that dominant, though? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. That's one thing right? we've discussed. Uh, like I didn't. I knew Daniel could win. I knew he had the punching power to to really cause AJ problems. And I think it might have been the interview that we did before the fight. I did say that. When Daniel hits you, if you do have any fragility or you have any insecurities or you have any fear, that will all come out of you on the night. It will, because he hits way too hard. And I don't think people realize how hard he hits until you have to experience it yourself. So I knew that there was a chance, especially we caught him early and in the first round, the stiff jab, the head's gone flying back straight away. I was like, I knew we had him because the doubt that that put inside him. And, and we're all human beings. I mean. Another thing we're actually just talking about outside, I won't mention the, the man I was just talking to because I don't want to throw him into it as well, but we're having a conversation and, and I love boxing. It's a sport I've watched since a young kid and whatever I have or have not achieved in my own career, I know boxing, believe me. We can sit down and talk about it. I know, I know the sport. And even post this fight now, the fact that, you know, Eddie Hearn's been talking about the rematch and everyone's bang, rematch, rematch, rematch. Let the brother breathe. AJ, he's, he's forced to say, yeah, let me, I want to do this. I'm not going to, I'm not saying that he should retire. I'm not qualified to tell anyone that they should retire. It's your job. If you love it, carry on doing what you're doing. But or straight away, it's like, we've got to get this back. The guy, every human being, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't care how much of a fighter you are, how much of a warrior you are. We all have trauma. We all have demons. We all have insecurities. We all have fragilities. You've just been beaten pillar to post. That's not beat around the bush. It was a dominant performance. Let him go away, let him recover, let him regroup, let him talk to his family, let him talk to his friends, people, and, and find within himself, and then come out organically himself to say what he wants to do. And, and a rematch could well be what he wants to do, but not within, come on, 12 hours, 24 hours of a contest. That, that's, that's, all that to me is a facade, because it doesn't come from a place of tr truth. You have to have time to go and so soul search, to seek and find truth and answers. You don't just do that within 24 hours and say, yeah, let's, like, let's do it. You know, it's, it's, it's poor from the, the team just throwing at him like that. Should he stay away from Daniel Duvaldo? Again, it's not my job to tell him what he should or should not do, but what I could, can say is from a human level, it should have taken more time to let the guy just, you know, throw, like, <laughs> footballers get concussion, they're not allowed to play for a week, yet you're allowed to get dropped four times in a boxing fight and knocked out and you're making decisions within 12 hours. You do the math. What did you think of the refereeing on the night? So this is a sensitive topic because, you know, if I've got any plans of, of, of coming back to the ring and I don't want to jeopardise you know, my father as well, but you're, you know, <laughs> you get, you get um, home favourites. Uh, you have to respect that almost to a degree because of what AJ has done for boxing, even though you want things to be you know, completely fairly uh, refereed. Um, what can I say? Yeah, we've, I got the job, we've got the job done. A lot of frustrations. I feel like just giving extra time to count, a few favourable things. But we've seen it before. I'm sure we'll see it again. Yeah, after that, I spoke to Frank Warren yesterday and he yeah. was very unhappy, to say yeah, the least, with sure. Marcus McDonnell yeah. on that. But we can move on from, from referees. I yeah, feel yeah. like we've, we've talked about referees enough over the last 30 yeah, months. Um, I'm an Arsenal fan as well, so I don't like, when I hear referees, I'm triggered. As soon as I start hearing referees. That's exactly <laughs> what Frank said about yeah. Arsenal as well. Um, <laughs> we can move on from referees in general, yeah. George. Um, what do you think Alexander Rusik was thinking ringside? Yeah, so this is the thing. Again, my dad's touched upon this a lot as well, and, and people can think, you know, as we, we know what the platforms are like, and I don't really care for, let's say, uh, people, people having different opinions. They, they're entitled to do that. But, you know, YouTube, typically, people are, you know, it's a bit of a troll platform. People come in with their comments and whatever they say. But we're pretty good at reading people and body language and tells. And, and Usyk is just... Usyk outboxed Daniel when they fought. I'm not under any illusions, yeah, yeah. but he felt Daniel's power, and I know that he got hit with a body shot. There's no, we can do all this hypothetical uh, debating and tribalism, and because you like Usyk, oh, blah, 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 blah. Most of the boxing world, like I told you, I, I spoke to two Hall of Fame referees, and they both told me it wasn't a low blow. We, we know that shot happens. You, how many boxing events have you been to? When you get hit on the belt, it happens in every single fight, and it doesn't get called low, so whatever. Usyk has a wariness for Daniel Dubois. Do you think he would have got up if the referee started counting? No, nah, he was. I'm telling you now, his body. Like, look at if anyone wants to replay it. Look at the physiological tells. Look at him. He's shaking. His hands are shaking. His his body shut down. I don't know. I, I can't break it down scientifically in terms of organs or whatever else. But he was in a bad place and he was in significant pain. Completely, just yeah. So, Usyk, because of that, when you felt a man's power, 
like I said, all the media, all the noise, all the talking to the side, when you felt a man's power, you'll always be wary of them. He knows he's got the boxing skills, let's say, on Daniel, but Daniel's a man of confidence, more momentum now, 30 months uh, training with this team under his, under his belt with my father. And he, the world is his oyster, honestly, currently, the world is his oyster. And credit to him, credit to the young man, credit to his father. Um, he obviously knows his son very, very well, knows how to you know, get him to tick. And the team just looks, at, the, at this moment in time, it looks formidable. And that run that they've, they've, they've been on is testament of that. What does Daniel Dubois, this version of Daniel Dubois that we saw on Saturday night, do to Alexander Usyk in a rematch? So I think what people need to re remember again, is like boxing's not like a game of football. In a game of football, you're guaranteed 90 minutes plus whatever additional time it is. Boxing, you can win it in a punch. So you can lose one round, two round, three round, four rounds, 11 rounds, 12 rounds, you can lose all the rounds. But if within those 12 rounds, you're able to, to, to land a significant shot and stop your opponent, that's a way of winning. So um, I think that has to be remembered. And, and uh, it, sorry, coming back to the first fight, there's this narrative, oh, but Usyk was winning easy anyway. It doesn't matter. That's not part of the rules that you can get knocked out, right? So um, how the fight goes, again, Daniel knows this. Daniel needs to be prepared to understand that he, he's going to lose rounds but have that mental fortitude and that complete certainty that I'm going to find my target and when I do, I'm going to hurt and stop this guy. Is that and where I he believe... lost it after that whole incident? He, I think he lost yeah. his head a bit. This yeah, for thing. sure. I think there's a lot of going on. And, and you have to remember, and people, you know, I've always said don't bring politics into boxing. And, and Tyson Fury kind of got mocked for, for, for his statement about Usyk after, but like, I don't understand. This is people being tribal again. Be objective. It, we were, it, the fight was in Poland because of, of, obviously the events going on in Ukraine right now. It couldn't have, it couldn't have been Ukraine. It was Ukraine, Ukrainian Independence Day or in and around. The president came up on the screen to give a speech to his people. It was a, it was a political play, a stunt. Like it was. There's no t point beating around the bush. That's what was going on there. So you weren't going to get any favors in the backyard. You just weren't going to. The referee didn't even know what to do initially when he got hit. He paused. So it was all just against the script. So. For sure, I think uh, the next fight will probably, it won't, it'll be in, in mutual ground. I don't know where it'll be, whether it'll be in the UK, whether it'll be in, in Riyadh. But the point is, um, yeah, Daniel have a huge, huge opportunity and he's more than capable. And you can sit here and tell me Usyk's a better boxer in this. And I'm sure he may be technically on a technical level. He's highly experienced, decorated amateur, undisputed champion, incredible resume. No one's not, I'm not taking anything away from Usyk, but Daniel Dubois is capable of stopping Alexander Usyk. To be fair, that rematch only happens on a, on a big assumption because um, mm. Usyk's got his own rematch to deal with first with sure. Tyson Fury and your dad believes that Tyson will stop him. This time. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Tyson at the event. Tyson's my boy. I've always backed him. Uh, again, he's another one. I don't think people realise how good Tyson is. Came up short against Usyk last time. I think it was a super close fight. Um, that, one, that one stylistically is tough because if I'm Tyson, you're wondering how to prepare for it. Are you going to go there, maybe stand your ground more, put on a bit of weight and stand and bang a bit more and use your physicality? but then you always run the risk because Usyk is super fit. If you don't get him out of there as a big man and you go into seven, eight, nine, ten, he just takes it up a gear. He takes it up a gear and we've seen it time and time again. The flip side is he, he, he comes into boxing the same way as he did last time, but is more disciplined and sticks to that. And I truly believe if he does that, he can outpoint Usyk. I think the first six rounds, I wouldn't say were easy, but Fury, he had a, a control firm control and yeah. then he actually got caught coming forward, if you see it, throwing like a four punch com combination and walked onto the left. And that was just, just changed the whole fight. I think it might have bust his nose and then his focus went a little bit and he started losing rounds. So he's capable of winning multiple ways. How he does it is up to him. He knows he's uh, more equipped than me. He's been in and around the game for a long time. So yeah, he, he, I'll be back in Tyson. He's more than capable of winning, but we have to also respect Usyk because he's been there and beaten these guys over and over again. So he has to be, you know, probably going to it as a favorite. Well, isn't it fantastic? Like. For, for your dad, for Team Dubois, that we're having this conversation now where it's a three-headed monster with mm -hmm. Usyk, Fury and Dubois. Mm -hmm. Th those are the best three heavyweights in the world. Sure, it's, it's mad to say. And it, even me, like I said, I, even though I'm close to the camp, you visualise this stuff, you hope for this stuff, but when it actually materialises, sometimes it, 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 it catches, so not, not surprises is the wrong word, but when it actually all comes to be, comes to pass, there's an awe of, 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 that, of that reality. And, and we're just you know, incredibly grateful to be here, blessed to be here, grateful, and we'll continue to work hard as a team to, to achieve you know, the peak of, of what can be done together. Absolutely, whether it's an Usyk rematch, uh, a Joshua rematch, yeah. or a fight with Tyson Fury, uh, it's only a mega fight it's now for Daniel Dubois, 100%. which is brilliant, 100%. but um, he's no stranger to a big fight. So yeah. we look forward to the future of Daniel Dubois, only 27 years old. George, appreciate mm. the time. Congratulations to your dad. Thank you, sir. All Thank of you. Team Dubois on a fantastic yeah. victory at Wembley Stadium on Saturday night, and I hope to catch you soon. Definitely. Take it easy. Thanks a lot. God bless.